Are we live? You're <laughs> live. We're on. Oh, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome to uh, Christ United Methodist Church here in Waynesboro. I'm Brian. I'm uh, I'm the pastor here. I'm also the class clown, you might say. Uh, but uh, great to have you here with us today, and it's 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 great to be here ourselves. Of course, there are only the few of us here today. Uh, Cindy's playing music for us. Uh, Matt will be singing. Carl is handling the, the tech stuff, the sound system. And of course, Sue is our director, producer, uh, working the camera as, as well this morning. But uh, great to have you with us. You could have been anywhere today, and you chose here. So thank you for that. That's wonderful. So a couple things before we before we jump in. This is a reminder. You, Perhaps you already know, but maybe you didn't hear. Maybe this is your first time joining us, which is awesome. Uh, there are a few things that we're going to suggest you have ready for us when we get to worship. One is uh, elements for communion, so bread or cracker or pita or something like that, as well as either juice or wine or something like that to serve as your, as your drink. Uh, a candle, some sort of worship space. Bibles are always good, too. Um, uh, something to light the candle with when we get to that spot, your heart stone, worry stone, a glass or bowl of water filled right to the rim, right to the brim, um, as well as maybe a plate or something underneath it to catch any water that might spill over. Uh, I think that's about it from that. Um, Perhaps you, uh, if you haven't already, you could, could real quickly download our bulletin so that you could follow along for some of that stuff. Because there are spots in here where there's, uh, there's engagement. We want you to feel engaged this morning, even though we're apart from each other. So you're going to be talking to your phone or television, computer, whatever it is, when you're uh, responding back to, back to us and singing along, sing along with the songs this morning. Um, I will be using my phone. Uh, when I, if you catch me looking at my phone, which is probably going to happen a lot, it's not because I'm bored or disinterested. It's because I want to see what you're saying. Uh, so if you had something you wanted to share, you wanted to respond in some way, you can uh, think, uh, put a comment on our stream here on this page, right on this video, uh, or you can send me a text directly, and that's 570-351-1619. Those can be comments. Those can also be prayer requests. If there's somebody that you want to pray about, uh, you can put it right there. And we've got some other stuff in a little bit, too. Oh, one other thing you should have is a piece of paper that you can doodle a heart on. Or if you've already got a bunch of hearts, you can color them in every time you hear the words heart or love. And uh, see how many of those you can catch throughout the day, throughout the service this morning. Um, I believe that's it. So let's jump right into to worship, then, through music.
Wonderful. We continue with our Easter season because Easter isn't just one day. Uh, we have an abundance of days to celebrate new life. The early church shared the abundance they had in this way. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. We create a temple of worship in our hearts that connects us across boundaries, distance, and time itself. But as we share this worship, we will stay connected. At the heart of the matter, we are connected through the spirit that makes us one in love. We are going to center our hearts as one to begin. So let's take a deep breath together. I invite you to place your hand on your heart and let's lightly tap together in a slow heartbeat rhythm. Holy living God, heartbeat of creation, help us to take this time to center on you. For you made us, you gave us life, and you continue to be with us every moment, every breath, every step. Hear this assurance from God. Be still, O oh heart, you're not alone. Your beat is shared with me. Come now and come and center here. Your mind secure and free. Let's take another deep breath. Making sure our shoulders and any tension we feel in our bodies is letting go with the breath. One more. Let's pick up our, our heart stones, our worry stones and let our touch on its surface remind us that God's touch is within us, between us, and around us. As close and real as this object is in our hands right now is how close love is to us always. Let us imagine letting go of our worries for now anyway into God's heart of love we offer this prayer song of letting go. Into your care we offer now our worries, fears, and strife. We turn to you and know Let's, let's light our candles and set our, our worry stone just right next to it. And then join with me in singing our first song today, our first hymn, He Leadeth Me, O Blessed Thought.
speak of the pastures of well-being that Christ, the shepherd, desires for the flock. Let us give thanks for the well-being, <coughs> excuse me, of being together and the abundance of our tables. So let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, who with your word and Holy Spirit created all things and called them good. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us. Through Jesus' suffering and death, you took upon yourself our sin and death and destroyed their power forever. You raised from the dead this same Jesus who now reigns with you in glory and poured upon us your Holy Spirit, making us the people of your new covenant. I invite you to lift your bread or cracker or whatever you have at home. On the night before meeting with death, Jesus took bread gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, then he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your spirit on us, gathered here and gathered all over the place, and also on these gifts, that in the breaking of this bread and in the drinking of this cup, we may know the presence of the living Christ and be renewed as the body of Christ for the world, redeemed by Christ's blood until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at your table forever. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. So pick up your bread, your cracker, wafer, whatever you have, and say with me, thankful. Thankful. Take and eat. And now pick up your juice, your wine, whatever it is you've got there this morning. And say it again with gusto. Grateful. 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 Take and drink. Jesus used the metaphor of a shepherd several times in his ministry. In this passage from the Gospel of John, the sheep know that the shepherd really cares about them and offers what they need, good, abundant, green pastures to eat in, echoes of Psalm 23. They recognize the shepherd who takes care of them as they hear his voice. 
I assure you that whoever doesn't enter into the sheep pen through the gate but climbs over the wall is a thief and an outlaw. The one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The guard at the gate opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Whenever he has gathered all of his sheep, he goes before them and they follow him, because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger, but will run away because they don't know the stranger's voice. Those who heard Jesus use this analogy didn't understand what he was saying. So Jesus spoke again, I assure you that I am the gate of, of the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and outlaws, but the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief enters only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came so that they could have life, indeed, so that they could live life to the fullest. There are so many ways to live life to the fullest right now. Or, as another version of scripture calls it, living life abundantly. Being together, either physically or virtually, is one important way for us in this moment. Perhaps we can keep up some of our connection habits we have exercised well beyond our time in isolation. This next scripture is an extended version of our theme scripture for our Easter season series and shows us the value early Christian some of whom had to gather in secret and isolation. We're supporting one another abundantly. The believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the community, to their shared meals, and to their prayers. A sense of awe came over everyone. God performed many wonders and sights through the apostles. All the believers were united and shared everything. They would sell pieces of property and possessions and distribute the proceeds to everyone who needed them. Every day, they met together in the temple and ate in their homes. They shared food with gladness and simplicity. They praised God and demonstrated God's goodness to everyone. The Lord added, to the com added daily to the community those who were being saved. In these two scriptures, we see the desire of God for us to be taken care of, for us to live to the fullest, and for us to support one another in having abundant life and community, food and gladness. The thief in the first passage could be anything that robs us of those things. Sometimes the sacrifices we have endured because of our attempts to slow this virus can feel as if we've been robbed of our well-being. But we can also turn that around and see that these sacrifices are how we share goodwill and well-being with one another. Our hearts overflow with the grace and guidance we know from the shepherd, and we want that goodness for everyone. Glad and generous hearts overflow with love in so many ways. <coughs>
causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Yeah, and I have to follow that. <laughs> oh, wow. Amen. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you, Matt. Hmm. So, um, my, father had, uh, my father had a great whistle. My father had a great whistle. I cannot whistle like him. N nowhere now. I can whistle, but my father had a whistle, and he put his fingers in his mouth, and he'd whistle. And it was one of those ones that could carry you could hear it a good distance away. For me, it was also very distinctive. I don't care. If you put him in a room with 100 other people and everyone whistled, I would be able to identify my dad's. I would have been able to identify my dad's. I would say, oop, that's pop. I know it. I know it. But that's how it is with, with children and their parents and parents and their children, I think. When, when we had Chris as a, as a child... It was easy for us to identify his cry, his sound over someone else's. Even if we were with a whole bunch of other kids and parents, and when he got older and could speak, you know, you hear the word mom or dad, you would think it could have been anybody. No, we, the parent can identify, oh, that's ours. Or just sit there and say nothing when it's somebody else's. Right? And vice versa, the child, the child seems to know, even just as an infant, the, the voice of their parent, the voice of their parent. There's, there's a connection. There's a connection. Perhaps you've experienced that and in some way. You, you, you probably know what I'm talking about. They know the sound of each other's voice. And for some reason, it's, it's relatively easy to identify them. So Jesus, in that passage today from John, says that my sheep know the sound of my voice. They don't get distracted by somebody else. They won't follow another shepherd. They, they know my voice. So it should be easy to hear Jesus' voice, to identify the voice of the shepherd, the, the voice that is filled with such love. And yet, I don't know about you, you guys are probably much better at this than I am, uh, sometimes it's, it's quite difficult. Sometimes it's quite difficult. And I think it's difficult for, for a couple different reasons. I think there's a couple things we need to do in, in order to have a better job of, of hearing the voice and identifying the voice. One is we need to listen better. Because again, I don't know about you, maybe you're better at it than I am, but... Even when I'm praying, it's usually just me. It's a one-sided conversation. You, you can't get used to the voice of the shepherd if you're the one doing all the talking. So we need to do a better job at listening, or I do anyway. But again, that could be hard because there's so much noise, so much noise all around us. We're hearing so many different voices on on Facebook and on TV and just so many things taking place that the voice of the shepherd tends to get drowned out. So we need to pay, do a better job of listening. We also perhaps need a better job of, of, of quieting down those noises, perhaps distancing ourselves from some of those voices especially the ones that want to rob us of life. 
Jesus says that I came that you might have life and have it fully. Now, Jesus isn't talking, he's not just talking about that life beyond this life that we have through him, through his grace. No, Jesus is talking about life happening right now. And life with Jesus, life with Jesus is better than life without Jesus. It's more full. It's more full. And it's also more fun. It's more filled with joy. Not necessarily happiness, but joy. And there is a difference between those two. <laughs> Last week, before we, before we hit start on the camera, uh, we were uh, joking around. Uh, turns out, a couple of us anyway are pretty big Mel Brooks fans. Uh, I love Mel Brooks. Could recite most of the lines of many of his movies, and we were joking about them. But today I have a, a, a relatively serious quote from Mel Brooks. This is not from one of his movies. This is not from one of his movies. This is a relatively serious and profound quote about life. He says, look, I don't want to wax philosophic. Yeah, but he's going to go ahead and do it anyway. But I will say that if you're alive, you've got to flap your arms and legs. You've got to jump around a lot. For life is the very opposite of death. And therefore, you must at very least think noisy and colorfully, or you're not alive. So I think what Mel is trying to say is we need to have lives that are filled, filled with joy, filled with life, filled with love. Because that's the kind of life that Jesus offers to us. And that's the kind of lives we're supposed to live so that we can then help others to find the shepherd, to hear the voice, that they could also have hearts overflowing with love and lives filled with joy. Now, again, joy is not the same as happiness. We talked about that a few months ago during our, during our Advent series. But joy is something different. Joy is something different. Happiness is situational. It's based on what's taking place. What, what's, what am I experiencing right now? But joy is deeper. Joy is deeper. There's a great song. I think it's a great song uh, by the group Sidewalk Prophets. I've only recently come to become aware of the song. I'm not sure when they, when they recorded it. Um, and I'm going to post a, a YouTube link in a little bit after we're done here. So you can look up the song and listen to it yourselves. Uh, we can't do that. We can't stream the, a song from a different group. But I can share some of the words with you. I can share some of the words with you. The song is called Smile. The song is called Smile. And it says, this is the, the chorus, the refrain, there's always a reason to always choose joy. There's something deeper that the world can't destroy. Smile when you think you can't. Smile, get up and dance. Smile, there's a bigger plan. You've got a reason to smile. And we do have a reason to smile. We have the reason of God's mm -hmm. love. We have the reason of God's grace offered to us through Jesus, who came that we might have life right now and beyond. Full life filled with joy. And so, friends, be filled with joy and have your hearts overflowing with love. So our response today, our, our, our action response, hope you have your, your cup or bowl filled with water. And I want you to take your worry stone. And we're going to drop this into, into it. The glass of water, the, the bowl of water, my cup of water, filled to the rim with, with a rich taste of brim, it? symbolizes the state of grace and love that is always and already what God gives to us. When we drop our stone into it, when we drop our worry, when we drop our grief into it, 
we will see love spill over. Placing our feelings, our trust into God's love, help us to pour out love all around us, making that love available to everyone. There is always enough to go around. So go ahead and drop your stones into the water. So our theme scripture says, they ate their food with glad and generous hearts. One way we can be glad and generous is to share uh, about how we are finding strength, hope, love, and peace in these days. This is a part of, of breaking bread with each other as we break open our hearts to one another as well. So in this week's scripture, Jesus talks about listening to the shepherd, not to the things that rob us of our well-being. Who or what have you found to be a voice of the shepherd, giving you a sense of of well-being and abundance in this time? What things are thieves threatening to rob you of a sense of calm and trust? Or if you can't think of anything from, from this week, what do you have in in memory of something that offers abundance. Feel free to share your thoughts as comments on our stream or send me a text. And when our worship experience is is finished, talk with each other about these questions or phone a friend and, and share some of your thoughts with them. And now we'll uh, prepare ourselves for a time of prayer. Some, okay, I'll do that one. Over here. So it is difficult in this moment not to be near some of the people we love and might be worried about. So take a moment and say out loud with each other or in your comments or text to me the names of people you wish were right there next to you at your table today. And as we name them, they are present in our hearts. We add to that Nancy B, who's having surgery this week. And we lift John R, who has a broken hip. We lift, the fam- uh, we lift Teresa and her family. Teresa's mother-in-law died due to coronavirus. So we, we pray for, for all of them. We also rejoice with uh, Janet and Galen who are celebrating their 50th, 57th anniversary. Uh, 
We also want to call to mind the people we cannot name, whose names perhaps we do not know, but we know they need our prayers and God's comfort. So we pray for those who have lost loved ones, for instance, Teresa and her family. Pray for all those who are sick and recovering. For those who are caring for loved ones who are, who are sick at home. For all of those who are caring for persons in, in medical care. Doctors, nurses, medical technicians of all kinds, orderlies. emergency medical personnel. And we pray for those who are separated from loved ones. For those who are feeling alone and isolated. For those who are helping and are so very tired. for those who are struggling to find friends, food, and comfort. And for those who are afraid. Let us take another breath of spirit and as our amen. We know that God sends out our prayers in the spirit. Breath of God is blowing from within us outward as a spirit of compassion and presence. And now with the confidence of children of God, we are bold to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to ask the director to kind of zoom in on my shirt. Somebody wants to know what my shirt says. <laughs> this was a, a gift from one of you, a surprise gift, an anonymous gift from, uh, from somebody out there. Um, and it's got a couple musical notes. And this one says, what happened? And this one says, the staff is working from home. <laughs> So there's no staff there. <laughs> Somebody appreciates my sense of humor. This is good stuff. All right. So that's my shirt. Anyway, so it's time to praise God uh, and raise our, our, our heartbeats maybe a little, our, our, our endorphin level, levels a little bit. John H., don't bother. Don't follow it along at home. We don't want those headaches again. Let Bob S. embarrass you uh, with being able to do something you can't. <laughs> anyway, uh, but it's our, our time. We're going to improve our heart health, physical health and, and spiritual heart health. In other words, it's the interactive portion of today's worship experience. So it doesn't matter if you're in bed, if you're in a chair, if you're sitting on the floor. Uh, just follow along with some of these things. Stretch to the sides. Stretch out. Stretch over your head. You can get up on your toes if you feel comfortable doing that. Ah, okay, and then follow along with these lame motions I put together with, with this <laughs> litany. So we know that Jesus is present with us, even in our very homes. We will not let fear be louder than love. But with glad hearts and rejoicing souls, we will sing God's praise. For we are Easter people. Amen. That was great. Hope you feel some good vibes coming at you. So while we have our energy up, let's decide to send some energy out into the world and to everybody that needs it. What message does the world need? Perhaps you will decide to 
uh, create a way to let more and more people know the message of Christ. You are not alone. I am here. My love is overflowing with love for you. What can we do to create more well-being in our household, in our family, in our relationships with those we cannot be with right now? How can we offer abundance to those who are working so hard right now? How can we offer abundance to those who feel short on calm? Maybe you can make some, some worry stones, paint them up, decorate them, uh, and either give them out to people intentionally or just drop them off in places as you're going for a walk. Uh, let somebody else pick it up and maybe brighten their day, help them, have, help them to find joy and calm. Or make up your own plan on how to have goodwill and offer abundance from hearts overflowing with love. We do appreciate you being part of this, and I know I've had folks asking me, how can we continue to, to partner and stuff like that? This is great stuff. Um, we, we do still, have, of course, have bills to pay, and ministries continue. Uh, if you're interested in making donations to the church, that's, that's welcome. Uh, there are links here on our page, on our Facebook page, or you can just go directly to our, our church website and, uh, and click on the page there as far as ways to give. It's also listed in the bulletin, so if you scroll down, if you haven't yet printed out the bulletin, you scroll down, you can find it in there as well. Um, so let's, uh, let's join together in our closing hymn, our closing hymn, Because He Lives. And 
text. I guess I've been answering your sermon, your text as I've been going along this morning, so nothing left. As we close this time together, remember, God is always with you. No matter what you face, no matter what trials or hardships come your way, God is right beside you, always filling your cup to overflowing, guiding and directing your path. So acknowledge your fear and your worry and know it is as true and holy as any feeling, including joy and hope and love. Take heart. This is the heart of the matter. Shalom, chavarim, shalom, chavarim, shalom, shalom. Lachim. 